So one of my favorite things besides ordering a Tesla online and very simplistic delivery of the car was how simple it was to choose my options. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about the options and differences in trim in this video and what matters to any potential buyers out there and any tips I would give as a current Model 3 owner to anyone interested in a Model 3. I'm also going to go through my car's trim and sort of explain my thought process behind everything, what I could have gotten and what may be different now. Hey everyone, my name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, I talk all things electric car, primarily my Tesla Model 3, and my experiences in owning an electric car without home charging in an apartment, and how that's been treating me in Nashua, New Hampshire. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. You know, it's right down there in the, the corner, the red button. Let's give it a little, little click. A little click would be great. And please also give this video a like and that'll let YouTube know that my channel is of interest to you and hopefully we can grow it for future people of the internet who are interested in Tesla, specifically Model 3. This video will be helpful and interesting to them. Now let's get into the video. Now I think the easiest thing to talk about from the start is the differences in the trims of the Model 3. There are three trims starting from the cheapest to the most expensive. We have the Standard Range Plus, the long range, and the performance model. Now starting at the least expensive Tesla Model 3 in the lineup is the Standard Range Plus. Uh, it is a rear wheel drive car. It has the lowest range. It has the slowest zero to 60 time at around five seconds. And it has the slowest top speed. Now, just because it is rear wheel drive and, and the slowest out of all of them does not mean it is not fast. I drove a Standard Range Plus when I test drove a Tesla, it was still fast, it was still peppy, it was still fun. The Standard Dream Plus still has the five seats, the glass roof, the 15 inch uh, display for the entertainment, uh, front trunk, rear trunk, same chrome finish or same chrome trim or chrome delete if it's a 2021, same sentry mode, autopilot, cameras, and full self-driving capability with purchase as well as over-the-air updates. So they do share a lot in common. The Standard Range Plus also charges a little bit slower on level two at 7.6 kilowatts, 32 amps, and at 170 kilowatts at supercharger. Then we have the long range dual motor. That is the one I bought. And it is a dual motor all wheel drive car with the longest range, a quicker zero to 60, as well as tire top speed than the Standard Range Plus, and also includes the premium interior. The Standard Range Plus includes the partial premium tier, which we'll talk about later on. And finally, we have the performance. And I'm going to talk a lot about the performance here because for most people, I don't really think it's of interest unless you're a track driver or just really want the fastest car there is. So it has less range than the long range, but still more than the Standard Range Plus. It has the highest top speed, quickest 0 to 60 time, it's still all wheel drive, and the premium interior. And also has the performance upgrade. What's the performance upgrade? 20 inch wheels, tuned brakes, lowered suspension, a spoiler on the rear, and track mode. Track mode is better cooling and management of the regenerative braking, as well as tuning the handling, using it on the track for long days of hard acceleration and quick turning. It's the most expensive. I think it's a very niche one. A lot of people still enjoy getting the performance, but for me, I stuck with the long range and I'll talk about those reasons why. Now that you've chosen the trim of the Model 3 that you want, here's where you can add your options. Your options for paint are the following five. You get white, which is standard, black, which is $1,000 extra, midnight silver metallic, $1,000 extra, deep blue metallic, $1,000 extra, and red multi-coat, which is $2,000. Now, I originally ordered the long range with red because I thought it looked really good, and I heard that the multi-coat, which is the red and the white, which is standard, supposedly did better with paint. Eventually I went with the white because I thought it looked great and I was not really going to justify spending a little bit extra on the paint. On your next options is the wheels. And those are the standard 18-inch aero wheels included with the standard range plus and the long range. And circling back to the paint options, all five cars have the options of the same paint at the same price point. Back to the wheels, 18 inch standard era wheels, 
think they have all season tires on them. And I don't know what the 19 inch sport wheels come with, but those are obviously a little bit bigger and less aero efficient than the aero wheels, obviously. And now on the performance, you exclusively and only get the 20 inch Uber turbine wheels. I don't know what kind of tires they have in there, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be very thin and very high friction, less efficient than aero wheels to get the nice uh, grip on the track and grip for your launches. And now we pick interior. And this interior is separate from the partial premium to premium interior I was talking about, which we will get into. And you have an option of black or black and white. <laughs> Very straightforward. And the black and white is an extra thousand dollars. Now, when I chose my interior, I didn't know that the white would, one, look so good, and two, be good with stains, but I've heard that white is very good with stains. And then finally, you come standard with autopilot, over the air updates, and all that stuff, but you can choose what is priced at now, ten thousand dollars, the full self driving capability, which includes navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park, summon, traffic light and stop sign control, and coming later this year, which is auto steer on city streets. And that's, full self driving is a whole nother thing, but now this can be bought after you get the car, but they always say, if you want to get it before, because it might increase over time. When I could have bought it, I think it was gonna be 8,000 or 7,000, way too much anyways, but. So which trim of the Model 3 do I recommend to people? Well, I can start with the performance because that's the easiest. I don't recommend that for literally anyone unless you want the fastest, uh, best handling, quickest Model 3 there is. I think it's out of most people's price points that they're looking at it. The practicality of it is just not as good as the other ones for the price. My biggest debate was between the long range and the standard range plus. At the time of getting the car, I was so worried about battery range and degradation. Countless articles on the 2013, 2012, 2014 Tesla batteries have been very favorable in that the batteries last long enough, they usually get replaced under warranty, and will last well into 200,000 miles, which was my goal. Looking back on it, I would have been fine with the Stand Range Plus. And the reason I chose the long range was it was the best bang for my buck fastest car, but not too fast and unnecessarily expensive. The most amount of range, you know, I do take road trips to see my family and you just never know and it's always nice to have that extra range. You, you know, you can always add different wheels, you can always get paint jobs and other wheel types and the software, you could always add more software, uh, like full self-driving, but you can't add more range. I want an all-wheel drive for the snowy New Hampshire, but to be honest, I would have been fine with it. Yes, I did take up to my, my mountains, had I had the standard range plus, trip would have been a little bit different, but I would have had snow tires too. And I would say for most people, a standard range plus would be fine. Those who are a little bit more interested in longer range and just the acceleration and all that goodness in the Tesla, get the long range. But you really just need to know how far you're going and where you're going and how long do you want to charge, how long do you want to charge overnight and stuff. For me, without home charging, long range, longest range EV was the way to go. So as I've said before, most of the trims share a lot of similar traits. The five seat arrangement that you can see here, this big glass roof overhead, the standard 15 inch touchscreen display with all of the sensors for parking, uh, lane departure warning, all that autopilot, sentry mode, app control, and all that good stuff, as well as this uh, vegan leather into minimalist interior dashboard they do share a lot of uh similarities but there are some differences and that's what i was talking about before this differences between the partial premium interior and the premium interior that i mentioned and that has to do mainly with their three key features there are no rear heated seats in the partial premium interior aka on the standard range plus premium interior like my long range has heated seats one two three four five and then there is a reduced sound system in the uh, partial premium interior. I believe the subwoofer on the front and the two speakers on the pillars are deactivated. And finally, the only difference that you see within the first year of ownership is premium connectivity. Premium co connectivity is what allows the car to act like a smartphone. It's like the data plan for the car. Uh, that is in charge of live visual navigation. There are still maps, but live traffic and all that 
is uh, included in premium connectivity for karaoke, car streaming for internet, video, Netflix and Hulu, as well as Spotify and all that is included in the in premium connectivity. Premium connectivity does not include over there updates. That is still standard on all three cars. And now the only difference is the premium interior gets one year of free premium connectivity. I have that in my long range. Standard range plus only gets 30 days. After those trials end, you know, obviously it's a better value on the premium interior. It's $10 a month and every Tesla Model 3 after the trial ends will have to pay that charge if those features are desired. If you like this video, just remember to like the video below, give that good thumbs up to let YouTube know that I am trying to grow this channel and it is on a steady path, but we can do better. Please subscribe and let your friends know about this channel if they're interested in electric cars especially a Tesla, or just in general, they want to see me talk. I think I'm pretty great. Thanks for everyone stopping by, and now, question for you. What do you think about the three trims of the Model 3? What's your favorite? Which one's the one you desire? Which one do you have if you're a current owner? Let me know in the comments below, all that. Let me know. I want to hear from the community. You guys are just important to me as my story is to you. And have a nice day.